Today on Inside the Issues, I speak with Rafet Akunai on Turkey's regional and global role. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Inside the Issues, a CG online podcast. I'm David Welch, the CG Chair of Global Security at the Balsillie School of International Affairs and Professor of Political Science at the University of Waterloo. And every week I speak with a noted expert on international uh, governance here from the studios at the Center for International Governance Innovation in Waterloo, Ontario. And today I'm very pleased to welcome uh, the Turkish Ambassador to Canada, Mr. Rafet Agunay. Welcome to uh, Waterloo. Thank you very much. It's, it's an honor. For very me to good be here. time for you to be visiting us because Turkey recently has been very prominent in the international news and, and playing a new and very constructive, from most perspectives, international role. So if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind asking you uh, at the outset if you could speak a bit about why now Turkey is all of a sudden uh, a dramatically more prominent player in uh, Eastern Mediterranean regional relations and in global politics in general. And in particular, I'd be interested in your thoughts about uh, why Prime Minister Erdogan decided to take a a leading role in promoting the cause of Palestinian statehood at the UN? Well, actually, uh, when you uh, look at the uh, history, um, uh, Turkey has been uh, quite active in our region and beyond uh, for the last uh, couple of decades. But the developments uh, since the end of the Cold War uh, has brought Turkey to a more uh, visible, more prominent uh, place. Um, uh, if you remember, uh, during the, for instance, Oslo process, Turkey was, like Canada, was of one of the mentor uh, states uh, helping both the Palestinians and the Israelis. Or Turkey has been uh, trying to negotiate with both sides, uh, Israel in the Palestinian issue, and uh, just before the Gaza incident, uh, we uh, organized several uh, proxy talks in Istanbul between Syria and uh, Israel. And it was almost coming to an end, but unfortunately the G Gaza incidents uh, have uh, interrupted that uh, process. Now, looking at the history also, Turkey is not only in the Middle East, but beyond, both in the ca uh, ca Caucasus, in Central Asia, have been very uh, active uh, since the uh, end of the Cold War. And before, as a frank country within the NATO itself, Turkey's, uh, Turkey had a very prominent role uh, within the Western alliance. However, uh, the reason why uh, it's more visible right now is uh, probably uh, the economic development of uh, Turkey, uh, plus the political developments, of course. Um, uh, one should admit that after the uh, Cold War, the, uh, the set up in our region, the the, the strategic setup has uh, dramatically changed. Mm -hmm. Before we had, uh, uh, we were surrounded by rather client countries of uh, superpowers, and uh, there was a balance between the two superpowers. And Turkey was one uh, of those countries uh, within the West. So uh, the uh, contact with our uh, neighboring countries were rather limited. Uh, in the 80s, 70s, and uh, uh, 60s. Uh, uh, but uh, now, uh, two important developments. One, the, these countries have started to be more independent in their policies. Um, secondly, uh, Turkey has become really a, 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 a center for economic uh, growth. Um, today, Turkey is the number 16 uh, in the world, 16th largest economy. That's the sixth in Europe. And uh, back in 1923, when the Republic was founded, we were not able to uh, produce a needle, mm -hmm. as we say it. But uh, now almost 85 to 90 percent of our exports are industrial goods. And our uh, production, our import-export value has increased tremendously. Mm. I remember when I was in junior high school, that is 60s, uh, we uh, were told uh, which factory was uh, where in Turkey. Uh, it was so few. 
And you could memorize them. I can memorize. Yes, we could memorize them. Um, in 1980s, the Turkish uh, trade balance was around four or five billion U.S. dollars. But now we are talking about 300 billion U.S. Mm -hmm. dollars. Quite a transformation. Quite a transformation. And, and how much of that trade is, um, is regional as opposed to European directed or European direct, European is uh, last year was 54 percent of mm -hmm. our exports or trade in general and regional we still need to go and do more it's around uh, 20 uh, percent uh, so we have to uh, continue working on uh, regional uh, with, with the regional uh, countries uh, more uh, than ever in order to uh, improve the economic relations. Um, one more point that I have to underline is uh, Turkey's democracy. Turkey is, as you know, uh, since 1923 when the Republic was founded, uh, our founding leader Kemal Atatürk introduced democracy in Turkey. Of course, at the beginning it was not a multi-party system but since 1945, we have a multi-party system in Turkey. And the Turkish voters are now used to vote in and vote out the governments. You can uh, rightly point out or remind uh, our viewers that uh, we had some military interventions in the past. But none of these military interventions uh, were uh, there to last more than a couple of uh, mm -hmm. years. Uh, the one in 1980 uh, uh, lasted only two, two and a half years. Uh, in 1960, we had about a year and a half, less than a year and a half, almost. And uh, 1971, it was just an intervention. Now, uh, when uh, you look at this uh, past history of Turkey regarding to these uh, the, the military interventions, uh, you see that it was sort of a, it cannot be accepted, but it was a sort of a, uh, de, you know, putting the train on the uh, tracks uh, again, mm -hmm. democracy tracks. In other words, these did not intend to destroy democracy, but put the uh, track, uh, the, mm -hmm. the train on the on track again. And of course, this is a very, uh, wide area of discussion so we can go right. into uh, the details we cannot say everything is right. was okay of course uh, there is uh, you know the, the the concept of democracy and uh, interventions cannot right. uh, co uh, within the within that concept cannot be condoned but i would like to, to follow up with you on that in just a moment when we come back okay you're watching or listening to inside the issues a cg online podcast look for us at cgonline.org on facebook on twitter and on youtube Welcome back. Just picking up where we left off. Uh, so the, the role of the Turkish military in Turkish politics is a very interesting one because, as you said, these interventions were always very short-lived. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that uh, they used to be intended primarily to safeguard the republic, but also a certain sort of policy range within, uh, within Turkey. And over time, that second consideration began to fall by the wayside, so that military interventions became more confined to safeguarding democracy and the republic. And now, it's as though the army has almost stepped back from the role of, of being politically active domestically. And Turkey's undergone a very interesting recent uh, political series of changes in, in which, among other things, um, people are now uh, more able to express uh, openly their religious faith in, in Turkish politics. There's more room for uh, religious parties in Turkish politics. Not, not a departure from republicanism, but um, I suppose one would say a, uh, a loosening of the definition of what would be acceptable political behavior in a Turkish republic. Is that correct? Well, uh, I wouldn't agree 100% uh, uh, with uh, what you have said. Uh, maybe it is the uh, developing development of the, uh, the, the culture of democracy in Turkey, what we are uh, witnessing right now. Because, uh, and this is also very much 
uh, you know, uh, we can discuss this uh, mm -hmm. on this issue vis-a-vis uh, -vis the recent developments in our uh, region. Democracy is not only an ideology or an idea or, you know, a, a concept uh, for uh, the uh, how to run a government or a state, uh, but it's also a, a sort of a culture because if you do not develop this culture among the population, then uh, it's very difficult to understand. So uh, I would say, you know, maturation of the Turkish democracy right now and uh, the, the, um, the, the things are now in place, uh, the concept is in place. As far as uh, region is concerned, um, Turkey is a secular country and all the countries, all the parties are expected to be a secular, uh, you know, to base their policies on uh, secularism. Uh, however, Turkish secularism is, does not mean atheism. Mm -hmm. uh, today in Turkey, we have uh, 125,000 mosques, more than any other uh, Muslim country per capita. And uh, uh, many people in Turkey are devout Muslims. But when it comes to the uh, relations with the state, it is secularism. Mm -hmm. And I would just uh, like to point out that uh, most of the time uh, we keep on uh, reading in the newspapers or we hear on TVs and uh, shows uh, claiming that uh, the ruling party right now, uh, which, is the, which is the third term, is a religious party. But at one point I uh, served as a foreign policy senior foreign policy advisor to the prime minister. I never heard him saying that we are a religious party. He always mentioned about uh, secularism, right. in, even in uh, private uh, discussions. And the best uh, example of it was when he visited uh, Egypt, Libya, and Tunisia. Both in Egypt and in Tunisia, when he delivered speeches, he uh, told to his audience that he was a Muslim, devout Muslim, uh, and uh, as a person, secular, he, he cannot be a secular, but the state should be secular because it is the only way for the state to uh, stand with uh, the, the between, I mean, uh, to, to, to uh, treat all the faiths, all the people equally. Right. Do you think that's one reason why he, he had such an impact? Do you think he was really striking a chord with uh, <coughs> the people who had taken to the streets in Tunisia and Egypt? And they shared that understanding of personal religious faith. And, and yeah, Of course, some circles uh, did not like this, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they did not like to hear this, uh, these words of, of the prime minister in those countries as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was uh, highly regarded. Mm -hmm. Coming back to what we had discussed, uh, we, we started uh, our discussion before. Uh, now, Turkey's role. Turkey is a secular country. It's a Muslim country. It is a, a economically quite well developed country. Um, you know, in uh, 10 years, we managed to triple our uh, per capita income. Now, uh, about 11,000. Uh, with an economy uh, at the end of this year, we expect to reach 1 trillion uh, US dollars. So, uh, in that sense, many people uh, look at Turkey as a model for uh, the uh, countries in our region. We do not want to be a model, frankly speaking, because all the countries have their own experiences, uh, their own priorities, and so on. And uh, for example, we never had a colonial past, but many of these, uh, almost all of them, uh, had uh, gone through a colonial uh, past. Therefore, you know, the developments on those countries, socially, politically, religiously, whatever, uh, was uh, different than us. However, Turkey is ready to share our experiences with them. Mm -hmm. uh, Turkey is ready to do more economic uh, establish more economic ties with them, more trade. 
and uh, cooperation. And one should not forget uh, something very important. When the Warsaw Pact uh, collapsed, the states, the newly emerging states in Eastern Europe, were helped by the others, by the Western Europe, European countries, by the West in general, not Europe only, by the West. Um, and, you know, they were either uh, taken into NATO or EU, etc. That helped stabilization of those countries. Mm -hmm. Therefore, now I think it should be a priority for us as well to help the uh, countries which are going through this um, Arab Spring phenomenon uh, on that line. We have the, uh, the, the poverty should be erad eradicated. Economic ills should be taken off, and the uh, natural uh, resources of those countries should be belong to them. Mm, well, let's pick up on should that again when we come back in, okay, in just a minute. Sure. Uh, you're watching or listening to Inside the Issues, a CG Online podcast. Look for us at cgonline.org on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Welcome back. Uh, I was interested to hear you say that perhaps Turkey ought not to be thinking of itself as a model for other countries in the region, and uh, maybe I can probe you on that a little bit, because uh, to my mind, there's many things that the region could learn from Turkey. Um, people often don't realize that uh, Turkey, uh, well, before the Republic, the Ottoman Empire, had a very, very long history of uh, really quite a tolerant policy toward uh, minorities of various kinds, the Milad system. And uh, it was, in effect, a, a multiculturalism, a um, great deal of autonomy for uh, minority groups. And to some extent, Turkey even allowed outside countries to wield influence over their own populations in Ottoman territories. Uh, arguably, that is one of the most effective ways to deal with diversity in, uh, in the world today. And uh, I would think that perhaps Turkey might like to trumpet that aspect of its past a little bit more. It uh, seems to me that might actually serve as a model. Not only is Turkey geographically straddling the border between Europe and, and the rest of the Islamic world, but in a sense it's culturally doing the same thing. And, and uh, politically it's doing the same thing. So uh, it's interesting to hear you say that Turkey ought not to attempt to play much of a role as a, as a regional model. Well, uh, if you uh, refer to uh, Ottoman Empire as a model, I mean, uh, it should be taken uh, into consideration in uh, Canada as well, because right. today Canada is the maybe the most successful example of the 21st century on multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm not really that we learned from Turkey, but I <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> but and, and I'm very happy to hear uh, these words from you because. Uh, uh, on uh, many occasions, I uh, refer to this, uh, you know, this is something common mm -hmm. to share between uh, Turkey and Canada as well. Right. But that was Ottoman Empire. Right. Now, I used the word share ring uh, uh, in my previous sentence as well. Now, today, in, uh, the, 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 according to Turkey, um, uh, Turkish uh, point of view, uh, the uh, Turkey does not constitute a model, but it is ready to share the experiences. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why uh, we are uh, more active in the world. What about bridge? Is, is that part of the concept of Turkey's international role, to be a bridge between well, cultures uh, and regions? Well, uh, people uh, try to, uh, to refer uh, Turkey's role in different ways, bridge model, sharing, whatever. Uh, but uh, first of all, uh, we need to show that we are uh, sort of a country that uh, can, uh, be, uh, share, that's ready to uh, share the experiences mm -hmm. of the Republican era with the others. And I uh, just want to remind you, all these countries we were living in this under the same roof uh, when the Ottoman Empire was right. uh, uh, in place. And uh, secondly, uh, we have as economic model, there is also a lot of things that we could share. Now, coming to your uh, question, is it a bridge? Um, or are we in the West or in the West? 
Or both. We are, or both. Actually, we are, uh, when you look at the uh, cultural, you can say that, okay, this is an uh, Eastern civilization. But when you look at the uh, legal framework of a country, which is right. the best to define where it stands, we are in the West. Very because European. in Turkey, uh, since 1930s, we do not have any single law left based on religion or Sharia law. It's completely a secular uh, system. Um, in Turkey, for instance, uh, uh, women uh, got their uh, rights to vote and to elect and to be elected back in the 1930s. Uh, and don't uh, we have problems? Of course, we have problems. We have problems vis a vis gender equality all around the world. But uh, in Turkey, there is a complete gender equality, uh, equal pay to equal job, for example. Um, uh, now, Turkey, however, uh, has a concept of the Eastern uh, way of thinking and also a concept of Western way of thinking. Therefore, when we uh, go and talk in the West, they know that we can reflect the views of the East. And when we go and talk in the East, they know that we can, uh, we do reflect the uh, ways of thinking in the West. And it is well regarded, well accepted. I'll give you an example. Our president, when, uh, Abdullah Kir, when he was foreign, uh, uh, for foreign minister, he attended an uh, Islamic conference uh, organization's meeting and said, look, uh, first we have to look at ourselves. We have to see what uh, problems we have, gender equality or uh, uh, the other uh, issues. And we have to uh, try to find the uh, causes and the mm, ways to uh, repair these ills within ourselves first, instead of blaming the West. If a Western leader uh, goes up and tells these uh, words, uh, I think uh, he would not be uh, appreciated uh, as such, as by, by the much. But in, uh, if it is a Turkish leader, they do uh, listen. And we do the same thing uh, in the West and try to explain. Mm. Uh, do you want to call this a bridge role, bridging role? that I don't know. Well, it, it, it probably <coughs> fits pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back once more uh, with Rafet uh, Agunay to talk about Turkey's regional and global role. You're watching or listening to Inside the Issues, a CG Online podcast. Look for us at cgonline.org, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Welcome back. Uh, let's wind up by talking a little bit about Europe and Canada, if that's all right with you. So for a while now, Turkey has been very interested in uh, membership in the European Union. And uh, a few years ago, that looked as though that might actually be possible. And at the moment, that's looking a little bit more distant. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Turkey's interest in European Union membership and its, its perhaps its frustrations with the, the slow development in that direction? A lot of frustration among the Turkish population, frankly speaking. Um, uh, we are negotiating uh, a negotiating country and uh, we are ready to uh, join because uh, we have uh, completed all uh, the requirements to be part of this club. Um, Maastricht criteria, uh, the um, uh, Copenhagen uh, criteria, etc. Um, uh, and uh, we started uh, negotiations with uh, 35 chapters these uh, chapters on different issues uh, to harmonize the uh, relations. But uh, due to the uh, different political reasons of different countries, two or three within uh, the EU, some of these uh, chapters have not been able uh, to, we haven't been able to start uh, talking on these sub uh, sub uh, 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 subjects on these chapters. Now, uh, we are ready to further ne uh, our relations and we would like to see a full membership to uh, the European Union. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, 
there is a growing sense in the among the Turkish public opinion that you know some people do not want Turkey within Europe for cultural quote unquote reasons but uh, many of them are political as uh, we know now we have uh, come to a point that it's up to EU right now if the European countries want to be a uh, superpower I think they have to look uh, the value that will be added with the participation of Turkey Turkey is already in Europe culturally if you go culturally to, if you go to Berlin if you exactly. go to Amsterdam exactly. you, you see Turkish you hear Turkish exactly now uh, but if they don't if they want to remain a regional power that's up to their uh, own uh, decision uh, because uh, Turkey is a, has a very young and vibrant uh, population. Average uh, age is 29 in Turkey. Uh, we are uh, number six uh, in uh, economy in uh, Europe, and I uh, just want to underline that this is our own efforts. Right. And uh, we have, uh, since 1995, we are uh, in... Uh, customs union with EU therefore economically uh, when we join Europe it's not going to be a much problem neither for us nor for uh, them this uh, the 29 years of age is a good educated very well every year we have 500,000 Turkish uh, men and women uh, graduating from the universities mm -hmm. so it's a well uh, established uh, workforce now, uh, and I think the uh, unfortunate uh, developments of recent past showed that uh, Turkey's economy is much stronger than any other uh, country in the right. area. Now, the way you've characterized Turkey <coughs> really did bring to mind the image of Turkey as an emerging middle power, a significant economy playing a constructive international role, um, helpful fixer kind of role, um, playing the bridge. I know that's my word and not yours, but. Uh, this is all reminiscent of Canadian foreign policy in its heyday. Is there common cause here between Canada and Turkey? Are there some opportunities to, to develop a like-minded middle powermanship? Actually, uh, we have started an uh, initiative uh, with, uh, I mean, it's not an official initiative, but uh, we have started and it's uh, working well uh, with uh, some of your colleagues from uh, CIGI and uh, NIPSIA in uh, Ottawa. Uh, and uh, we first uh, call, uh, try, uh, you know, thought whether we should call uh, middle powers, but we uh, then decided to call capable powers. Uh, they had their first meeting, some 12, 13 countries, they had their first meetings in Istanbul, which was very successful. The second meetings will uh, be held in Mexico. So with Canada, we have, uh, this is uh, the common ground mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Canada. Unfortunately, with Canada, we have uh, an issue which is not directly related uh, to Turkish-Canadian relations, uh, taking hostage of our relations. But uh, despite that, in the uh, recent years, we have uh, had uh, some uh, developments. Uh, we signed uh, uh, the avoidance of double taxation treaty. Uh, the exploratory talks on free trade agreement is on the way and uh, we hope to sign it we have to sign it because when you become uh, when you sign a similar agreement with the EU um, since we have customs union it's expected that the those countries that sign uh, free trade agreements uh, with EU uh, would also do the same uh, with uh, Turkey as far as uh, Turkey's uh, economic relations with Canada uh, despite all odds uh, Turkey is number six or seventh uh, uh, destination for Canadian exports, and uh, so uh, very few. The, the figure is very low, about two billion both sides. But uh, we have but to. The trend work is on positive. That. Yes, trend is positive. Well, let's hope that the trend is positive in Turkish-Canadian relations in the future in a broad range of areas. Thank you very so, much for coming in today and thank speaking you very with much. us. Appreciate thank your you. time. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us on Inside the Issues, a CG Online podcast. Join us next week and look for us anytime at cgonline.org, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube.